He told you you're not worthy. When he told you you're not loved, he told you you're not beautiful and you'll never be enough. Fear, he is a liar. Hi, I'm Kristen Ostrander. Welcome to Music That Inspires. And today's song and review is called Fear is a Liar. It's by Zach Williams and the writers are Jason Ingram, Zach Williams, and Jonathan Lindley Smith. And this song really talks a lot about fear. Anybody in the room here not afraid of something? I've never experienced fear. I'm afraid all the time, not gonna lie. Things come at us, things bring us fear. But the good news is we can battle and fight against fear and anxiety and assumptions and all kinds of different things when we're armed with the right weapons. See, the reality is that this song talks all about the different fears. And although that is like the most impactful song, it comes there and it tells you over and over. The enemy is a liar. Did you know, first of all, that you have an enemy that prowls around? The word of God says that the enemy prowls around looking for someone to devour. So he's looking and he's listening and then the ever so whisper, you're not good enough. You can't make it. You'll never make it. You're not going to be, you're not pretty. You can't do that job or this job. You're just not pretty enough. You have the face for radio. <laughs> the enemy is seeking to destroy us. And all he does is subtly lie. Think about in the garden. The very first thing that happened was deception. Deception. The snake, the serpent, the whatever, the devil, anything you want to call it, it's all the same, right? The enemy comes and says, did God really say not to eat from that tree? He tries to make God a liar and says, did God really say that? And Eve's, oh, did he say that? Did He doesn't want you to be like him. If you eat of that tree, you're going to be like God. And God doesn't want, the enemy tries to tell us that God's benefits are not real or true or right or that god is withholding something from us so he whispers these subtle lies to us and what do they do in this song it says fear will take your breath stop you in your steps steal your happiness rob your rest fear is a liar and that's all it seeks to accomplish that's what the enemy wants to accomplish when satan does the happy dance because you believed the lie and acted accordingly he lies. This whole song says, the enemy tells you you're troubled. You'll forever be alone. You're dirty. You're ashamed. Grace can't change you. Grace can't help you. The word of God is not what God says it is. He just causes us to question and doubt and then sit in fear. But the word of God has something else to say about fear. And it's real. We're not going to deny fear. Fear doesn't happen in a vacuum. Fear happens because there are certain circumstances or situations that cause the fear. For example, picking up the most world deadliest snake would strike terror in like almost everyone, right? Whether you like snakes or whether you hate them, or I I'm more of a fear of spiders kind of person or like sharks. Forget that. Forget it. But why do people like Steve Irwin or this Cobra kid, they just look it up on YouTube, can be perfectly comfortable with these absolute deadly animals? The fear there is real. That thing will absolutely kill you. And if you're afraid of death, which most of us naturally have some sort of fear of death because it's a very unknown thing. We all fear a lot. We all. I'm not going to say we all. Not everybody. There are fearless people out there and we'll talk about how to get fearless or manage our fear or control our fear and our anxiety and our worry. We'll get to that here today. So you're going to walk out with a word. You're going to walk out with hope for fear, for anxiety, because anxiety is still fear, anxious, worry, concern, imminent danger. That's what fear invokes in us, right? Looking at a deadly, deadly snake, that's a, there's a natural fear. Fear is not wrong. It is a natural emotion we have. But God has a lot to say about fear and about what we need to do with it. So what is the difference? How can Steve Irwin or somebody crazy, <laughs> that's what I call crazy, pick up a deadly snake and not have any fear about it at all? Because they have something, the antidote to fear. They have that. It's called knowledge, understanding, wisdom. 
They know exactly what they're facing. Steve Irwin didn't just pick up a deadly snake for the very first time in his life, the first time he saw it. He spent years studying their traits and their characteristics, and he learned their strengths and their weaknesses. He learned how to handle them and pick them up carefully, therefore removing the fear. Knowledge and understanding can cast out fear. He operated from a position of knowledge. So a lot of times we're scared of the unknown. What's going to happen? What will happen? What is going to be the outcome of this situation? What are these people thinking? All of this different stuff. If we want to battle our fear, which we all have, I don't know. I, you, there are a few fearless people out there in the world that do things like cliff diving and like free climbing. And I don't know, they just are audacious in that way. And I'm somewhere in the middle of those people and like the people that do nothing because they're scared of everything. So I, I've learned to conquer a lot of my fears, but this is not a, this is not just some random superpower. I'll tell you how I do it and other people can do it. God tells you how to do it right here, right now. When we want to battle fear, we have to arm ourselves with facts, truth, and knowledge. This means that we have to get curious about why we're afraid. And sometimes, obviously, it's very natural why we're afraid. Imminent danger. If you're standing on the edge of a cliff, <laughs> there's imminent danger, right? One more step and psh, you're all done. The venomous snake thing. If you're swimming in the water with sharks and you have a open wound or blood coming out, they can smell it for miles, right? So imminent danger, that is a natural thing. Knowing the facts about the situation, we have this natural inclination to fear. But what about those things? like? anxiety, things that won't let you leave the house because you're so worried about people, what people will think and say. You're fearful of an outcome. You're fearful of taking a leap of faith because you don't know how it's going to turn out. Therefore, we stay afraid. We stay afraid. But if we get curious and ask some questions and question our fear, not that it's wrong. Let's not ascribe or subscribe or I don't know. Okay, so let's, instead of labeling our fear as good or bad or right or wrong or something like that, forget that. Instead say, why am I afraid? What am I afraid of? And get curious in those moments because the fear is not wrong. It's an indicator of something. So why am I afraid of this? Ask yourself questions. We have to get curious about why we're afraid. Because that just, you're just having an investigation moment. We're like, why am I feeling this? Put your fear on trial. Why are you afraid? What outcomes are you worried about? What outcomes would you like? What outcomes do you think are going to happen? What has happened in the past could predict some of the future, but what have I learned in the process? Investigation leads to that learning, learning about your fear, learning about yourself, learning about the circumstances like the Steve Irwin thing. He didn't just pick up the snake. He learned about them. He understood their weaknesses and this and that. And then once he had understanding, he started to practice bravery, courageousness, saying, okay, I know about these things. So therefore I can proceed with caution, but I know that if I pick up this snake in this way, it's unable to turn its head and bite me. Therefore I'm a lot safer than I was the first time when I had no idea what I was doing, right? Learning creates knowledge and understanding, which can calm our fear and settle us down. There are things we all have been afraid of before that we are no longer afraid of because we've learned the truth. And the truth, God says, will set us free. So when you fear that when you feel that fear creeping in, which is the enemy, right? The enemy is trying to get you afraid because when we're afraid, we don't take action. And that means the enemy is winning because we're not taking action. Oh, against the fear. Fear is not, the fear of the Lord is from the fear of the Lord. And that's a whole different thing. It's not a fear and trembling of terror and immediate uh, danger. The fear of the Lord that the Bible talks about is a holy reverence, an understanding of God to the point where you have a reverence and awe, a respect for that person because of their authority, because of their power, because of who they are. There is a the Bible uses the word fear, but it is a holy respect and honor, a awareness of the position, right? So when it says the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, that is not we're cowering in the corner of fear of punishment. That is not the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is knowing him so well that you honor his 
authority and you honor his position and you honor the fact that although he is a very holy and just and powerful God, he is also full of love and grace and forgiveness and kindness. And he promises so many things. So the fear of the Lord is totally different than the fear that we have running from a venomous snake, right? So when you feel that fear creeping in, we've got to examine it. And then comes bravery and courageousness to get through it, right? Because the, we don't have to have the absence of fear to take action, right? So how do we start fighting and battling against our fears? First of all, we have to trust the facts. In order to trust the facts, you actually have to know them. So if you don't know them, investigate them, learning them. Ask yourself, what are the facts about this situation? First of all, what's the truth? What am I assuming about this situation? Most people aren't willing to admit that they assume a lot of things. They assume a lot of things. First of all, unless you are a mind reader, you have no idea what someone else is thinking unless they say that. So when someone says, oh, so-and-so thinks this or so-and-so thinks that, I always ask them, did they say that? If they did, then we have a fact. But if they didn't, you're making an assumption about how they think or feel about you. Now, that could be a very near assumption, but assumption nonetheless. It could be very accurate, but you're still making an assumption until you have a fact. So ask questions and free yourself from fear. But you got to be honest with yourself and you've got to be honest about of that. Ask the questions. Best questions to ask here is what does God say about this situation? What does God say about me? Those are the things that you can ask in any fearful situation. If you are struggling with anxiety because you worry about what all the other people are thinking or feeling, or maybe they're judging you, or maybe you were a really crappy person for a while and you had a come to Jesus moment and now you're different, but you're worried that everyone else thinks that you're still that same person which could possibly be true. It's actually could That could be it. Oh yeah. That person was a real jerk for a really long time and it's hard to trust them. But what does God say about this situation? We can examine the truth. And what is the truth? Oh, I've got lots of truth. Buckle up y'all because this is going to go fast and you're going to want to come back to this and listen to it again and write some of these things down if you don't know it or just listen to this over and over. When you feel fe fear, play this episode, right? John 8, 31 says, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, there's a presupposition there that they believed, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Anybody want to be free? I do. I don't want to live in fear and worry and anxiety and panic and all those things are real for most of us, sometimes on a minute by minute basis, but you will know the truth, the truth will set you free. Anxiety and fear and worry, they chain us up. We're bound to them unless we decide we wanna be free. And you have the keys, because for Second Peter 1, 3 says, you have everything you need to fight your fear and live an abundant, healthy, joyful life. His divine power has granted us all things, yes, all things, let's not miss that, all things that pertain to life and godliness through what? Through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and excellence. Second Peter 1, 3. So God already just told you right now in his word, he has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through what? Through the knowledge of him. Did you guys know, just like, just fun fact for you right here, right now. That's it. He has promised, he's given to you everything you need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Great. This is the answer. It's not the answer people want. They want to go and y'all, I have nothing against therapy. I have nothing against meeting with other people and gaining wisdom. There's wisdom in many counselors. The word of God says that I understand, but we always want to run to other things to solve our problems. When God says, I have given you everything you need for life and godliness through the knowledge of me. Okay. These are easy answers y'all. Okay. It's X plus B, A plus B equals C, right? Okay. Do you want all things for life and godliness? You already have that. Where do you get it? You go over here to the store. This is the store you buy it from, the word of God. 
<laughs> Everything that you need is right here in store for you in this book between these pages. The knowledge of God. How do you get everything you need for life and godliness? Know God. How do you know God? Oh, in his word. How do I gain knowledge of God? Let's see. Go to church every Sunday. Give money to the church. Serve, pray, listen to spiritual music. Avoid all this worldly stuff. No, that's not what he says. How do you gain knowledge of him? How do you get to know someone? How do you get to know someone? We have to spend time with them, right? Spend time getting to know someone if you don't know them. How do you know someone? You ask questions. You seek understanding. I want to know you. I want to know about you. I want to know who you are, what you like, what you don't like, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what makes you tick inside, right? Spend time with those people. So how do you get to know God? Through the knowledge of God, we have all things that we need. Anybody lacking anything? I'm, I have lack all over my life. How do I get everything I need? Know God. How do I know God? Spend time with him. Read, listen, study, examine his word. Notice I didn't say go sit in a church pew every Sunday, although I think we should gather together. Notice I didn't say search YouTube and watch a bunch of different sermons. Okay, yeah. Spending time with God is listening, reading, studying, and examining what he has to say. Because he'll tell him you everything about himself if you read and listen. He'll tell you everything about you if you read and listen. So how do we know? How do we get knowledge and understanding? That's really all about what this is. Fear preys on what we don't know. What we don't know. Fear comes and says, you're not worthy. <laughs> Rebuke that in the name of Jesus. God says I'm worthy. That just goes away when you know the truth. You can send it away. It's going to come still every day. Sometimes I have to say these things and we'll get to them at the end here. But Proverbs 2, 6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. You want knowledge and understanding? God has all of it. He has all of it. And you know what else? He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Who wants power, love, and a sound mind? Anybody? Can I get an amen somewhere? He has not given us a spirit of fear. So the spirit of fear doesn't come from God. It says he has not given us that. He has given us power, love, and a sound mind. So that sound mind that you have needs to go back to the knowledge of the truth anytime those lies and the spirit of fear comes up. Rebuke it with 2 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. That's the truth that we can obtain to when someone says, you're not worthy. You're not good enough. You can never be forgiven. You've fallen too far from grace. You're too far from God. You ran away. You haven't picked up my word in years. That's what the enemy wants to tell us. Oh, you're not a Christian. You're not perfect. What did you say last night to somebody? What did you do yesterday? I know all that. But what does God say? Not what does the enemy say. Not the lies that he's bringing out. What is the truth? The truth will make you free. This is all about what we want. Free from fear. Free from anxiety. Weapons that we can fight against this. Because y'all, some of us are going to battle this for the rest of our lives. Right? Like, just truth moment. Some people get complete deliverance right away, and some of us need to just work those things out and really own the truth. Let me give you another example of this, this fear, anxiety, because I think specifically as women, we are constantly questioning our worthiness. We're constantly trust. Am I pretty enough? Do I have the right eyelashes? Do I have, am I have, does my house look the right way? Do I have always constantly thinking about outward appearances? And the Bible warns us about this as well, right? So when we're thinking about that, but what if some random person who does not know you at all says something awful about you? Most of the time we can just laugh. We're just like, that person has no idea who I am. So that's really funny. Like I say things like the gas station clerk. I always joke about that because that's where my daughter works. And so I'm thinking like, she doesn't, she knows people, 
by way they come in and out, but she doesn't know them as people. I mean, get to know people after a while, but like the random person that you've never met before and they say, gosh, you're just a horrible person. You'd be like, you don't know me. So you can't say that. And yet the enemy wants to come at us and say, you're a horrible person. You're this awful thing. But when you're so confident in yourself or that person really doesn't know you, it doesn't affect you as much as somebody really close to you. If your bestie comes to you and says, mm, let's examine this in your life, you're listening up a little bit more. And maybe it's as faithful as the wo are the wounds of a friend, right? The, the word says that as well. Because our friends know us. And when they see us drinking poison, they want to snatch it out of our hands and say, stop doing that. The enemy, tiny little subtleties. He tells you, no, you're not good enough. There's plenty of other people doing what you want to do. You're not going to make it. Just give up now. Just give up now. God's not really with you. He questions. He makes you question God. He puts those doubts in your mind. Is God really here? He said that to Eve. He ain't going to leave you alone either. So God has given us what we need for life and godliness in his word. In Isaiah 41, he says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. That's what you can say in the middle of fear. Arm yourself with the truth. Write it on a sticky note. Play it this episode on two times speed if you have to. I don't know. It's only about 30 minutes, but fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed. I will help you. I will uphold you. I will strengthen you. And watch that fear dissipate. Isaiah 35, 4. Say to those who have an anxious heart. Anybody have an anxious heart? Daily. <laughs> For something or other, right? For something or other, I feel anxious about. But he says, to those who have an anxious heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with recompense of God. He will be with you. He will save. He will rescue. He will deliver. Does that mean instantly, like right now, like according to my will? No, he says he will. Be strong. Tells you to do something. Be something. Those are commands, y'all. When he says, fear not, that's a command. When he says, be strong, he's telling you to do something. Jesus says, do not fear, only believe. Before he raises someone from the dead, this dead child, he's going to try to heal her. And someone from the house says, don't trouble Jesus anymore. She's already dead. And Jesus says, do not fear, only believe. Right before he goes in and raises this child from the dead. Knowledge and understanding is the antidote to fear. Not necessarily the opposite. There's all kinds of different debates out there and psychology and this and that and whatever. And there's value in that as well. But the value is trusting what God says. Trust the facts, not the feelings. We have these feelings and we have to manage them and do something with them. Those aren't wrong. But then we have to put them into the right perspective. Tell yourself the truth. And you can make a list of some of these or you can copy one from Pinterest or whatever. Maybe we'll make you a list that you can copy and put somewhere but make a list of everything that God says about you and about what you can do. So when the enemy says you're not worthy, I can say I am chosen. I am royalty. I'm a God's child. I'm forgiven. I'm loved. I'm God's masterpiece. I'm called. I'm justified. I'm redeemed. I am deeply loved and never forsaken. Try that every time that fear comes in. It goes away real quick. You know how Jesus silenced the devil or Satan or whatever you call him, the enemy. I don't know. So many people have different words for that. It is the same thing, right? The enemy, Satan, the devil, it's all real. Just as real as God is a real enemy. But what did Jesus do to fight the enemy? He used the word of God. He didn't do miracles. He didn't set himself free. He used the truth and the truth made him free. Satan left because he had nothing else to contend with. Jesus had said all that. He was fully confident in who he was and who God said he was as his son. He's fully God and fully man. And he fought temptation with truth. He fought fear with truth. 
So if you know all those things, 1 Peter 2, 9, chosen, royalty, God's children, we already said all these things. Those are what's truth about you. I am redeemed. God has made me new. I might have an old self, but that's not me anymore. I am new. So when Satan says, oh, yeah, your past is just following you around. You ain't not, you're going to be nothing but X, Y, Z, an addict, divorcee, angry, violent, abuser, thief, cheater. That's what Satan's whispering to you. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I am chosen. I am forgiven. I am redeemed. I am worthy. I am called. I have a purpose, Ephesians 2.10 created you in advance for good works that he prepared for you to do. You're his masterpiece in his workmanship. You're made in his image. And he loves you more than any other thing. Yet, Satan wants you to believe otherwise. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture, this is how we get this knowledge. It doesn't just impute with us every Sunday morning if we sit in church for an hour. Yo, our battles are every day. Why are we only in the word once a week? Pick up your weapons. There are arrows. There are the enemies coming at you. You only wear your shield once a week. You only pick up your armor and arm yourself and use your weapons once a week when the battle is daily. Y'all, they have the weapons. We have the answers. We have everything we need to fight this. All scripture is breathed out by God. Profitable. Anybody want profit? Profitable for teaching and reproof, reproof, correction, training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete. And hear this part. Equipped for every good work. So when Satan tells you, you can't learn. This is taking too long. You're never going to get there. You're too late. You're too old. You're too this. You're too that. You say, no. I am equipped for every good work. And I will do that. There is no fear in love. And God loves you and me. It says perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. 1 John 4, 8. There is no fear in love. What kind of love? God's love. To know. Perfect love casts out fear. And what is love? Jesus shows us what love is. Greater, has, greater love has no one than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. And then he says, you are my friends. Jesus laid his, down his life for us, for you, even when we were still sinners, even when we're believing in our faith and wallowing in our depression. Y'all, I've been there and done that. And it's waves, it's roller coasters. This is not a perfect straight line to glory. That's why we need each other. That's why we need the word daily. Put on our armor and our weapons. Jesus shows us perfect love. Find it in the word. There is no fear in that. Doesn't mean we walk around all just taking all kinds of risks and doing all the things. He says, do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. At the end of fear is a liar which is just all God's truth wrapped up in song. That's why I have music that inspires because this is like God's word and God's truth and God's principles wrapped up into a three to four minute melody in a beautiful way that only God can make. And he says, let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall Your love is until your love is all I feel. Right over and over, cast out all my fears because fear is a liar. And every time you think of your fear, what is it stealing from you? It's robbing you of everything that you have. Instead, he says, know me and I will make you free from fear and worry and anxiety. Have you ever said to yourself in those fear and anxiety moments? Oh, I just wish I couldn't feel this way. I wish I could just be free from all this worry and fret and wonder. You can, my friend. Freedom is in the word. Let the word dwell richly within you, teaching you, admonishing you, admonishing one another. God says this, Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. How do we get wisdom? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God says everything that comes from his mouth is wisdom. 
That's how we find it. And he says, singing, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts. Let the word dwell richly within you. Those are your weapons. That's how you fight fear. And the more weapons you have, the freer you become. How do you get your weapons? In the word. In the word. He has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And if you repeat that over and over again while you have fear, know the facts. What does God say? Those are the questions to ask yourself, to free yourself from the fear. What does God say about this situation? Because he has something to say about everything. It's in the word. There are things in the word you didn't know were there. Go find them. And what, is this, what does God say about me? So if the enemy's coming at you with all these doubts and worries and fears, and maybe you have failed, and maybe you have screwed up, and maybe you have sinned and fall short, guess what? All of us have. So how can you get up and do it again? Get up and try again. Get up and try again. Let the word dwell richly within you. Know the truth. The truth will make you free. Fear is a liar. And truth will set you free. Now, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, and I don't take that for granted. I pray over you. I pray that all of this will dwell richly in your soul, and it will feed you. So when you feed yourself truth, what goes in comes out. Put it in. Stuff it in there. Zip it all up. Live on truth, and truth will make you free. See you next time on Music That Inspires.